John, would you like to play now? Thank you. Hi, folks. Uh, yeah, let me just get these pipes. Lynn has instructed me to play in front of the microphone, so I'm playing sitting down. Can you hear Lynn? Thank you very much, John. I'm just going to move my slide, move our slide on to the, that was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Um, so this is our program for today. Um, and um, it's absolutely wonderful to see so many of us here um, as, as uh, participants um, by, by making a contribution to uh, the, the readings today um, or by, by listening and supporting our event. This is the first time we've held um, an event to celebrate the birthday of, of you at Alan McIntosh, a very, very special poet who doesn't have enough, um, enough, uh, enough awareness um, of his role 
in the First World War. He was killed at the beginning of the Battle of Cumbrae, the same battle that my own maternal great uncle was killed. It's very special to, to me, I know to all of you. Um, I've mentioned here the um, E.A. McIntosh project and I'm absolutely delighted to see uh, Colin here. Um, Colin and I worked on a voluntary basis to create a project for three years for uh, Alan McIntosh to bring him to a wider attention. Um, and we organise a series of events, um, exhibitions and a website. The website is still in existence. I'm absolutely delighted to see uh, one two people who were involved um, in that um, programme as well as as, as Colin at uh, Pat Appen Kisnas was one of the people who read at one of those events. And at the same time, we were also involved um, with um, uh, other events in France. So Gwenal, who is here today, um, was organising the rededication of the Macintosh Chapel in Canting. So it's wonderful to see uh, my friend Gwenal here today. Um, and also um, Margaret and Katzler, um, Margaret Patterson and Bob Shanks were also involved in those events and those events between Scotland and France. So that was it's wonderful that you can be here with us today. Uh, we're going to um, read a selection of Macintosh's poems for, which are important to each person who has chosen those readings. And at the very end, um, I'm going to sing a couple of Macintosh's parody songs. Um, so as well as being a poet, he he um, he wrote parody songs for his, his man in the trenches, um, which obviously uh, were humorous and sometimes quite mocking too. Um, we've met many, Colin and I met many other people um, through um, through our project. One of them was Jacob, um, who um, was writing a book of annotations, annotating Macintosh's works. Um, and Jacob is now, an, and in the programme you can see uh, where his work can be downloaded if you would like to, to read those notes. Um, Jacob is going to read Ghosts of War. Over to you, Jacob. Please unmute. Uh, am I audible? Jacob, I, I, you're going to read Ghosts of War. Yes, uh, am I now audible? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, fine. Okay, when you and I are buried with grasses overhead, the memory of our fights will stand above this bare and tortured land we knew ere we were dead. Though grasses grow on Vimy and poppies at Messine, and in high wood the children play, the craters and the graves will stay to show what things have been. Though all be quiet in daytime, the night shall bring a change. And Peasants walking home shall see shell-torn meadow and riven tree and their own fields grown strange. They shall hear live men crying. They shall see dead men lie. Shall hear the rattling maxims fire and see by broken twists of wire gold flares light up the sky. And in their new-built houses, the frightened folk will see pale bombers coming down the street and hear the flurry of charging feet and the crash of victory. This is our earth, baptized with the red wine of war. Horror and courage, hand in hand, shall brood upon the stricken land in silence evermore. Thank you, Jacob. And now um, I'd like to ask Gwen Hael uh, Gauvin to read to Sylvia, please. Hi, everybody. Um, so please excuse my uh, not very good English accent. I'll do my very best. To Sylvia, two months ago, the skies were blue, the fields were fresh and green, and green the willow tree stood up with a lazy stream between. Two months ago, we sat and watched the river drifting by, and now you're back at your work again and here in a ditch I lie. God knows, my dear, I did not want to rise and leave you so, but the dead men's hands were beckoning and I knew that I must go. 
the dead man's eyes were watching us. Their lips were asking too. We faced it out and paid the price. Are we betrayed by you? The days are long between, dear lass, before we meet again. Long days of murder and work for me, for your long care and pain. But you'll forgive me yet, my dear, because of what you know. I can look my dead friends in the face as I couldn't two months ago. I'll read you the French version as well. À Sylvia. Il y a deux mois de cela, le ciel était bleu. La campagne était fraîche et verdoyante. Et verdoyant se dressait le saule. Entre les deux coulait la rivière indolente. Il y a deux mois de cela, nous contemplions assis le flot vagabond. Mais aujourd'hui, tu es retourné à ton travail. Et me voici couché dans un fossé. Dieu sait, mon amour, que je ne voulais pas me lever et te quitter ainsi. Mais la main des morts me faisait signe et je compris que je devais y aller. Les morts ne me quittaient pas des yeux, ma fille, et sur leurs lèvres était une question. Nous avons fait front et payé le prix. Vas-tu nous trahir De longs jours nous séparent, ma chérie, de nos retrouvailles. De longs jours de labeur et de fange pour moi, et pour toi longues seront l'inquiétude et la douleur. Mais tu me pardonneras, mon amour, pour les raisons que tu sais. Maintenant, je peux regarder dans les yeux mes amis morts, ce que je ne pouvais pas faire il y a deux mois. Merci beaucoup, Gwenelle, and thank you for reading for us in French as well as in English. That's very special. And talking of things in France, I just want to move on to this slide. Um, we have <clears throat> we have a special friend in France. Many of us, um, who I think is trying to connect at the moment and not quite succeeding. Um, Philippe Bozinski, who I have who I've known for decades now. Um, who has done a great deal to um, keep remembrance of the First World War alive and deepen our understanding of it. And indeed, um, himself excavated um, a First World War tank, Deborah, um, which is another big story. Um, so Philippe has sent me these pictures of recent um, reenactments. And this is um, taken in the Macintosh Chapel, as you can possibly see by the picture of Macintosh at the back. Um, and we see many of our friends in this picture and I'm just going to move it on to this one. And this one is by um, by Macintosh's grave um, at uh, at Orival. Uh, so the tank, um, Deborah, is at Flickier, um in the museum and this is um, close by Orival. So I'm going to take the screen share down now as I invite Helen Nicholson, my friend, to read um, her poem and Helen is going to read The Volunteer. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. The Volunteer. I took my heart from the fire of love, molten and warm, not yet shaped clear, and tempered it to steel of proof upon the anvil block of fear. With steady hammer strokes, I made a weapon ready for the fight and fashioned like a dagger blade, narrow and pitiless and bright. Cleanly and tearlessly it slew, but as the heavy days went on, the fire that once had warmed it grew duller and presently was gone. Oh, innocence and lost desire, I strive to kindle you in vain. Dead embers of a greying fire. I cannot melt my heart again. Thank you, Helen. Beautifully read. Thank you. Um, I'd like to invite Pat Kieran now, please, to read um, In Memoriam for Private David Sutherland, one of his most iconic and special poems. So, Pat, over to you. Thank you. Everyone can hear me? Good. Okay. Right. This is um, In Memoriam for Private uh, David Sutherland. If I remember rightly, David uh, was a resident of uh, a little village 
close to where I live now in Ray on the North Coast. Private D. Sutherland, killed in action in the German trench, May 16, 1916, and the others who died also in memoriam for that. <clears throat> so you were David's father, and he was your only son, and the new cut peats are rotting and the work is left undone. Because of an old man weeping, just an old man in pain for David, his son David, that will not come again. Oh, the letters he wrote you, and I can see them still. Not a word of the fighting, but just the sheep on the hill. And how you should get the crops in ere the year gets stormier. And the Bosch have got his body, and I was his officer. You were only David's father, but I had 50 sons when we went up in the evening under the arch of the guns. And we came back at twilight. Oh God, I heard them call to me for help and pity that could not help at all. Oh, never will I forget you, my men that trusted me, more my sons than your fathers, for they could only see the little helpless babies and the young men in their pride. They could not see you dying and hold you while you died. Happy and young and gallant, they saw their firstborn go but not the strong limbs broken and the beautiful men brought low. The piteous writhing bodies, they screamed, don't leave me, sir. For they were only your fathers, but I was your officer. Thank you, Pat. Magnificent poem, very special, thank you. Um, I'd like to invite um, Canon Charlie cleverly to read now to my sister and we believe that um, you are a descendant of Macintosh. Yeah. yeah can you hear me good thank you so much uh, for organizing this yes I think that this poem was written to my grandmother Muriel Macintosh who later became Muriel Rawlinson and uh it's uh, telling her really to, well, it's talking about her weeping and hoping that she won't weep too much. But the fact is she married someone called Alan, but never allowed him to use that name. He had to use another name. So she always wanted to remember her brother. Anyway, here's the poem, which has got a bit of the horror and the courage of Macintosh's poetry. To my sister, if I die tomorrow, I shall go happily with the flush of battle on my face. I shall walk with an eager pace the road I cannot see. My life burnt fiercely always and fiercely will go out with glad wild fighting ringed around. But you will be above the ground and darkness all about. You will not hear the shouting, you will not see the pride, only with tortured memory remember what I used to be and dream of how I died. You will see gloom and horror, but never the joy of fight. You will dream of me in pain and fear and in your dreaming never hear my voice across the night. My voice that sounds so gaily will be too far away for you to see across your dream. The charging and the bayonets gleam or hear the words I say. And parted by the warders that hold the gates of sleep, I shall be dead and happy and you will live and weep. So that's that poem, and we're told that the following day he won the military cross for conspicuous gallantry in another raid on a German trench. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, and um, thank you for reminding us of um, Macintosh's MC as well. Um, and um, we're going to read another of his poems, also called In Memoriam Next, um, which is... Um, but this was in relation to Arm Stalker. Um, Bob, uh, Bob Shanks and um, Councillor Margaret Patterson are both together in the same place 
Um, so I think Bob is going to read um, this poem first, and then Margaret is going to read her poem in No Man's Land. So Bob, over to yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much for allowing me to join in this very special evening. In memoriam, as I go down the highway and through the village street, I hear the pipes playing and the tramp of marching feet. The men I worked and fought with swing by me four on four, and at the end you cobble, whom I shall see no more. Oh, stop, where are you lying? From where and far away? Any my hands are buried to the quiet, contemptuous clay. There was no greeting given, no tear of friend for friend. From us when you flew over, exalted to the end. I couldn't see the paper, I couldn't think that you would never walk the highway the way you used to do. I turn at every footfall, half hoping, half afraid, to see you coming later than usual for parade. The old layer quick is broken. I drove there yesterday and the car was full of ghosts that sat beside me all the way. Ghosts of all songs and laughter. Ghosts of the jolly three that went the road together and go no more with me. Oh, stop, but I am lonely for the old days we knew. And the bed and the floor at Lido we slept in, I and you. The joyful nights and billets, we laughed and drank and swore. But the candles burned out now stock in the mess at Hedencourt. The candles burned out now, old man, and the dawns come grey and cold. And I sit by the fire here, alone and sad and old. Through all the rest come back again, you lie in a foreign land, and the strongest link of all the chain is broken in my hand. <laughs> Good evening to you all. In no man's land, the hedge on the left and the trench on the right, and the whispering, rustling wood between. And who knows where in the wood tonight, death or capture may lurk and see. The open field and the figures lying under the shade of the apple trees. Is it the wind in the branches sighing? or a German trying to stop a sneeze. Louder the voices of night come thronging, but over them all the sound is clear, taking me back to the place of my longing and the cultured sneezes I used to hear. Lecture time and my tutor's hunker, stopping his periods rounded close, like the frozen hand of a German ranker down in a ditch with a cold in his nose. I'm cold too, and a stealthy shuffle from the man with a pistol covering me, and the bus moving off with a snap and a shuffle breaks the windows of memories. I can't make sure till the moon gets lighter. Anyway, shooting is overbold. Oh, damn you, get back to your trench, you blighter. I really can't shoot a man with a cold. Thank you, Barb and Margaret, for those lovely readings. And um, this is the perfect um, continuation into this book. I'm going to try and, oh, it's difficult to get it quite right, isn't it? There we go. So um, our friend Colin, who has joined the call, my, my, my companion in the three-year project, to um to promote Macintosh, um co-wrote this book um colin campbell and rosalind green um called can't shoot a man with the cold so that is where the title came from and and of course it contains um lots of information about his life um and his poems um so i'm going to try and do something even more ambitious now i'm going to play um, Rosalind reading um, a poem and I'm going to attempt to include her pictures at the same time 
So off we go with the recording. Um, and please put your thumbs up if you can hear it. I might need to put my maximum volume on. Here we go. Snow in France. The tattered grass of no man's land is white with snow today. And up and down the deadly slopes, the ghosts of childhood play. The sentries, peering from the line, see in the tumbled snow light forms that were their little selves a score of years ago. We look and see the crumpled drifts piled in a little glen, and you are back in Saxony and children once again. From joyous hand to laughing face, we watch the snowballs fly, the way we used ere uh, we were men, waiting our turn to die. Tonight across the empty slopes, the shells will scream once more and flares go up and bullets fly the way they did before. But for a little space of peace, we watch them come and go. The children that were you and I at play among the snow. Thank you, Roz, for contributing to our, remem our remembrance and commemoration and celebration event for Macintosh from a distance. I think that worked. <clears throat> OK, um, thank you for everyone who's read a poem. I'm going to uh, sing. Um, so I think this is another of the many unusual things about Macintosh um, that he wrote these parody songs. So I'm going to sing a long one and a short one. This is. Um, where the trenches run down from the Somme to the sea to the tune, the mountains of Morn. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, Mary, the front is a wonderful place where a person can't fight without shaving his face. We're not very for right and of shells, so I found. But when generals come near, we all get to ground. I met one in a trench and some tea leaves were there And we got such a strafing it whitened our hair So it seems we must swallow the tea leaves in our tea Where the trenches run down from the summer to the sea <clears throat> At night time I can't sleep a full minute's space For the rats playing games on the top of my face And other small creatures I'd rather not name But they live in the folds of my kilt just the same Tell we Jimmy, if only our dugout he knew He'd never be asking to go to the zoo For every dugout out is a menagerie where the trenches run down from the summer to the sea the sap that i stand in it nightly is made into hell by a thing they call a rifle grenade and when heavy trench mortars are bursting close by it's not Lust of battle that gleams in my eye. Don't think me a coward, though, Mary, my dear. For along the whole front, it's the same thing I fear. And every young hero is funking like me, where the trenches run down from the summer to the sea. <coughs> At Albert they've lately begun an advance which is going to shove all the bush out of France and we are all waiting and hoping some day to meet with the gentlemen over the way and oh what a state of delight we'll be in when we're bombing our way up the streets of berlin so i hope in a few months i surely shall be in a train running down from berlin to the sea thank you Anne. One more. This one is a, a wee one. 
Oh, four and twenty bummers get out from Labwasel, and only ain came back again, remarking it was hell. Oh, wild day the next time, wild day the new, the lads that did last time, Canada knew. We bummed them for four hours until we had to stop, and then there was a row of tots upon the crater top. Oh, what day the next time, what day the new, the lads that did it last time, cannot day the new. So here's to the Kaiser, we'll soon his blood, if we canna throw a life, we canna buzz a dud. Oh, what day the next time, what day the new, the lads that did it last time, cannot day the new. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to just try and screen share my last, my late, my last, no, my last slide. There we go. So a very, very big thank you to all the contributors um, who are listed here for all of your piping poems and contributions and thank you for everyone else who's come to support us and listen today um and it's been a, a really special special um event something i'd hoped we'd do for quite a while today is a special day or in fact it is strictly speaking tomorrow um because it is the 130th birthday of you at Alan McIntosh, so it's really special that we are still remembering and cherishing him uh, as a poet and as a as a brave soldier all this time later. Um, I think to finish our event that John is going to play us another piece of piping and then um, we'll, we'll close the, the recording. So over to yourself, John, if that's still okay. I think we'll finish with a well-known slow air mile. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs>